Do you want to go me or you want to you no, you go, go back and forth? Oh, back and forth? That's better, right? Yeah, yeah, back and forth. So you don't have to hear me talk for like a whole fucking hour. Sit. Hey, I gotta, I gotta <laughs> go. the ratings would go up. I gotta go. <laughs> hey, subscribe. This is going fucking up. Fucking smuck. Hey, Demise has to go with. Hey, get the, get the triple chin going on. Get the junior whopper. <laughs> uh, we do need to go somewhere and uh, record when we come back from yes. Oregon. Because juices are going to be flowing. Hey, this is Haddles. C Squid and Chovy. We're talking about our main three or five. What do you say? Three or five? What? The influences. We were saying five. Five? Alright, yeah. let's do five. Me, uh, five, man. Musical influences? Yeah. Influences. Um, well, in no particular order, right? No, no particular, particular no, no particular Whatever order. comes to mind, Primus has got to be first and foremost. Primus is probably, actually, if it was in order, Primus would probably be first. Because that was just, um, I mean, when I started playing bass, Les Claypool, the bassist, st stood out like, not only in Primus did he stand out, but he stood out as a bassist. And in general. I've never heard that sound. Fucking general. I've never heard that technique. Um, he created his own sound. Half of the time, it doesn't even sound like a bass. It just sounds like it doesn't sound like a guitar either. It just sounds like some crazy fucking string instrument. Yep. So he's playing six string. He's playing four string. He's playing fretless. Fretless. He plays stand up. Pork soda. He plays a lot of the six string fretless, and he's adding distortion here and there. And he's tapping, and it's just like crazy, man. I think he also used the six string fretless in a Sailing Seas of Cheese, which I think is. Probably the best album from beginning to end, in my opinion. Jerry was a red car driver. All the way from beginning to end, selling seeds of cheese. Oh, Every fuck song. yeah. Pork soda, there, there's no second. Frizzle Fry is pretty crisp, too. Frizzle Fry, for Bill Burr, was saying this on his Monday morning podcast. And this guy got me into Primus through his cousin, Cousin Jay. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Frizzle Fry is basically one of the reasons why I started drumming. Yeah, because I, I was like, that, yeah. "What the yeah, fuck? Drumming, yeah, what is Tim Alexander? So sick. Like, Spaghetti Western. <laughs> you know what song? You know what song was for me? It was fucking goddamn to defy the laws of tradition. Oh really? Yeah, because it's just everything. He's doing so much fucking shit. Hi hat, funky ass hi hats. Um, when it stops and then Les Claypool's going oh, yeah. he's going and he's hitting the splash symbol yeah. but he stops it he goes Psst. I was like oh, yeah, what the fuck is that what's he shit. hitting I didn't know that he <laughs> was flash thing I didn't know he yeah. hit it and stopped it I thought it was something that's <laughs> like <laughs> that he <laughs> that he's hitting but that was and it's a three piece band and for them to be so it sounds like a thousand piece band. No, no, it sounds like a. It sounds like a six. A six it's like Rush. That's a three piece band. Too. Yes. You know, there's so much going on. Okay, here's another but, thing but, that we can throw in these segments. What song would you recommend? From Primus. Like each one, each artist we say we got to recommend one song. Eleven, probably eleven. Uh, it's on the uh, Santa Cruz of Cheese album. If not, if not, then probably DMV, which is up pork soda, because you DMV. get that tapping, um, you know, crazy. Uh, but eleven is a little more straightforward. Yeah, and it's actually in that time signature, eleven twelve. So I think that's why it's called eleven. <laughs> They're just like eleven eleven. <laughs> so, but it has the cool fucking intro with distortion. It's very similar to Blue Collar Tweakers. Except a little bit more yes. technical. That's the only difference. Blue Collar Tweakers is a fucking... That's like an, uh, That's a hard song right there. Like, the ending of it and everything is... Damn, Blue Collar Tweakers always... I mean, dun, 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 we used to jam that one out, remember? Yes. That was like a little like, jam like, dun, song dun, dun, to practice. Yeah. So, but yeah. Definitely 11 since she's... Primus is number... Uh, not number one on this guy's list necessarily, but it is one on his list. You can't eliminate, you can't forget the other two members of the band. Lur is such an underrated, talented 
Oh, hell yeah. Guitarist. I mean, for someone to be able to play guitar with a style like Les Claypool's got to be, you know, they got to be just as... Uh, wacky. They got to be just as wacky. They got to be <laughs> just as... Uh, um, yeah, exactly. Out there. And Shout out to Brain and, too, man. Brain. And Brain and, and Brain and. and God damn. Yeah. Herb, of and course. Even the guy on, on on Sausage got in one of the drums. Sausage. Okay, so let's move on to the next because that was. You want to go me or you want? Like, no, you go cool. back and forth. Oh, back and forth. That's better, right? Yeah, yeah, back and forth. So you don't have to hear me talk for like a whole fucking hour. Sit. Hey, I gotta, I gotta <laughs> go. Your ratings would go up. I gotta go. <laughs> hey, subscribe. This is you going fucking up. Fucking smuck. Hey, demise has to go with. I gotta go with Deftones over here. Deftones. Deftones. Or when I type it on the computer, I put Defontes all the time because I type it all fast. Oh, yeah. And I type Defontes. Huh. But it's Deftones because, like, wine, over time. They get, they get better and smoother, I must say. Like, their songs off their newest album, it's not the best fucking album they've made, but it's Phantom Bride and uh, the other one. Phantom Bride good has... Beer, by the way, too. Good beer, good fucking beer. Phantom Bride. Has, Phantom Bride you. has the fucking uh, guitar player from uh, Alice in Chains at the end. Oh, yeah. That song alone, da, 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 da. and then that yeah, da, 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 da. that song alone, it kind of just over it. It fucking, it's just it makes it gives you hope in music because it's just like so many bands go through that term that time where they're just like Metallica fucking completely uh, sold out on load and reload. If you want to say sold out, whatever. But they completely just went in garbage. The Deftones, it seems like they learned over the years and they stuck to what, what they love. That's why I say it's like a fine wine. Because over time, there's there's always... Uh, well, they dodged the new metal. They dodged it. They, they helped, they they helped, they they helped, helped fucking it. start it. They helped start it around the fur and then they were like, well, watch this. People are thinking, people are thinking they're going to be like another... Limp Bizkit Corn, and then they went White Pony, and it was just like, they dropped their guitars down to C sharp. They started playing dark shit with more, um, you know, uh, electronic. Atmosphere, yeah, more, from just Frank like Delgado. Ambient, and they were playing like a little bit offbeat kind of shit. Yep, Night like, Party. Yeah, it was just like, no one saw that coming. Exactly. Because, you know, the, the reason why I choose, I choose fucking Deftones is because... Just listening to last night, I was listening to the the demo CD they put out called Like Linus or whatever, and to hear that, you, it's the first one, right? The very first one with the cat. Yeah. And to hear their latest shit and everything in between, it's just brilliant work all the way through. It is real fucking music from the heart that is uh, not afraid to do what they want. There's no image to be. There's no image, there's no fucking anything else but people who make music from nothing. Like they say, that's like, how they make music. I like that. that's, that's, I, yeah, and I could, and I've heard them say that too, especially uh, Chino, and it's like, you could relate to that. And he goes, you know, they just write music, and if it sounds good to them and it's cool to them, they just help other people think it's cool too. And that's exactly. all it should be. That's all it should be. It's like, you write something, you're like, damn, this sounds fucking sick I can't be the only one that thinks this is sick yeah like four of us all came together and created this and we all think it sounds sick as fuck there's gotta be four more people that think it's sick as fuck exactly and then four more four more four more right it, it's word of mouth is the most powerful fucking thing by the way too word of mouth till the end of time what is that no I'm just saying word of mouth will always be the oh, most fuck powerful yeah. thing till the end of time no it is how Advanced technology gets word of mouth is always going to be no good. no advertisement is ever going to is ever going to be more than word of mouth because people listen to other people and how they said dude these guys right here fucking made my fucking hairs on the back of my neck stand up these scholar boys they're gonna listen to that over scholar 
an ad on fucking Facebook. You know what I mean? The word of mouth. Listen to a lot of Adam Bend, Oregon next year. Yeah, bitches, get ready. <laughs> fucking Smeek. So, a song that I would recommend by Deftones. I would fucking go with the. Uh, fuck, that's a tough one, man. Yeah, they get a lot. Jesus. Jesus. Primus, they had a lot. <laughs> fuck. Like, fuck. Um, damn. But then think about it like, every time you hear it, you're just like, fuck yeah. That's what I kind of did with the Primus. Yeah, yeah. Every yeah, time you hear it, like, if it comes on my Pandora, I'm like, turn it up. Fuck! You know what? It's gonna be one that a lot of people don't need, like, fucking either needles, cool. needles and pins. And the drums are like off, but the riff is just the same. Yeah. The drums sound fucking big. The guitar sounds fucking crazy. It's it's, it's a in, good song. It's a really good fucking song. Track two. On Track two the on the self title that'd be fucking schmucks. All right, let's move on to the next. Who else? <coughs> uh, probably I'm gonna go weird again with it, Mr. Bungle. It's, I would say Mike Patton, but out of all of us, he's got like, I don't know, God knows how many projects. Fucking You know, Jesus. he's got Faith No More, he's got Phantom Oss, which I also like too, and, and Tomahawk and shit like that. But all of his bands, it's got to be Mr. Bungle, which is his original band. Yes. Based out of Eureka, California. So, this band is like... Northern California has some fucking awesome music, man. As opposed to SoCal, no hating. So Especially uh, during late 80s, early 90s, and shit like that. Yeah. Metallica, Faith No More, Mr. Bungle. Well, Primus. Metallica's from LA, but they had to move up to the Bay because. I thought they were from here. Okay. Well, James Hetfield and Lars are from Los Angeles, and Dave Mustaine. That's why Dave Mustaine was in there, because he's from fucking. Uh, well, what's his LA? name is from uh, this area? Who? Kurt Hammond. I know, that's why they moved over here. Yeah, okay. They seriously. They're Claypool friends in high school. Yes, they're a friend. And then, but uh, they moved to El Sobrante or some shit because they uh, everyone was in it was uh, into glam down there. Uh -huh. So they moved their act up to, to the Bay and played in San Francisco. And he's like, You're they love it. Poison Motley Crue guys, uh, scorpions. <laughs> Scorpion, no scorpions are tight. They have some tight shit. But yeah. Poison, <laughs> poison. <laughs> Right, you. <laughs> so wait, Mr. So, Mr. Bungle so Mr. and Mr. Bungle, and Mike Patton, right? Like this is Mike Patton in general. Like be, I like pretty much almost anything he puts out. Like I just saw him a couple months ago in Berkeley uh, do Dead Cross, and Dead Cross is basically a straightforward metal band supergroup with Dave Lombardo on drums and a couple of the guys from I think the Locust Slayer band. drummer. If you if you guys don't Dave know Dave Lombardo from Slayer, yeah. But Mr. Bungle, unfortunately, I never got to see them live because they were doing their thing during the 90s. And uh, they were your, you, I guess if you want to put put like a label on it or whatever the fuck, you, you would call it like jazz fusion because it was very <coughs> jazzy, funky, metal, everything, man. It was just like all the shit messed, in, messed into one and it just yeah. worked and it was cool. A lot of people kind of... Um, digest it but it's 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 really fucking cool and like um i think it was like the early stuff was a little more um movie oriented soundtrack cinematic kind of stuff sounds and weird mike patton's doing weird voices and creating characters with voices which i really think is cool Just mr like so different, bungle so many different like voices and shit the shit that he was doing like with with uh, uh the microphone before there was really any technology of, you know, changing your voice or anything. It was just creating these characters and singing and screaming and growling and just uh, crazy, crazy stuff. Rock melody, yeah. R&B melodies and jazzy, just, just shredding. Jonathan, just... Jonathan Davis of Korn was saying, he's like, Faith No More, right? Of, of course, Mike Patton, Patton was like the, the main reason why Faith No More at the was so broke out, broke out, and up, and yeah. and so influential because Jonathan Davis said, "Well, actually, Faith the More as a whole because they had keyboards in there. They had so he just said that yeah. they they made it to where you can do something different and be big. Mm -hmm. 
You don't have to be fucking a thrash metal band. You don't have to be a fucking glam metal band. You don't have to be a... They mix it all, yeah. They mix it all. There was like so that's one. what Jonathan Davis said. He's like, we grew up in fucking Vegasville. There's nothing. There's oil fucking things. They're called derricks. <laughs> Those things. A bunch of use. There's a bunch of fucking oil things and there's neighborhoods. And all we do is skate and listen to fucking music. And uh, they're, they're, awesome. they're, they're like, exactly right. <laughs> we do a skate play. <gasps> but yeah, Mr. Bongo, dude. And I think they only had a bunch of... Uh, what do you call it? Fucking sample e- albums, EPs. Yeah. And then they had three um, full lengths. But if I were to choose one song from them, it would be off their self-titled album, which is when they got signed, and they got signed due to Mike Patton joining Faith No More during the his Mr. Bungle times. He wore his Mr. Bungle shirt in the epic video. Oh shit! He wore it in the video. He just was probably like, yeah. "Hey, he let me do this like for a Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, a t-shirt is is a moving. You're a moving billboard. Yep. Basically. So you might go for a big ass ice cream truck. Fucking that song fucking blew up. Epic. Yeah. And he's wearing his Mr. Bunger shirt, and then next thing you know, at Warner Brothers, who was with Faith No More at the time, signed them to a contract. Yes. And, and they were probably like, "Who did the fuck did we sign?" Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Willin, I didn't know he was doing this on the side, but the song Jesus that I really Christ. like from Mr. Bungle and has a little bit of everything um, musically, and from them you can taste that as a whole. Um, is uh, my ass is on fire? <laughs> that's the song name. My See, ass that's why Mr. Bungle is. I have never listened to. Not saying I. There's a reason why I have not, but I just I haven't. Had I haven't listened to any of their shit that much besides stuff he's played, but not for no reason, not like, yeah, like, of course. Oh, fuck this. but because I'm I listen to my the like shit that like I've I know I've heard it in your car, I've heard them before with other friends, and I've never it. dove, into, dove it. into it, just yeah. been like, oh, this, oh, this is death, and then started going fucking I'm crazy. No, the room thing about death though, the it's it's really really. The shit that they do, you'll fucking appreciate it. No, fuck you. Yeah. No, there is some intense death metal bands that, that I like. Check this shit out. Yeah, there you go. Mr. Check, this, check this shit out. Mr. Bungle, and at first, Primus, Deftones. For the rap, for the hip-hop point of view, let's go with Mac Dre, right? Because not only did he influence the Bay Area in a way, because that's where we're from, right? And he started a, a nice little culture, a whole fucking a dance, the thizzle dance, all that shit, right? But the whole fact that he started in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, was about to blow up, got sent to prison for five, six years, came out. That's what's going to happen to Bobby Schmurder. Oh, yeah, I saw you posted some shit. Because that guy did two or three songs... And I heard it when they Matt came Dre out. Matt was the first rapper ever to fucking rap from prison. But that guy's going to come out and hopefully start killing him again. Go on. Nice. Matt Dre. That's the only thing about the Bay Area that I do not like is that music is very limited in the Bay. Everyone wants to stay in the Bay. Everyone was like so proud to be independent. So <coughs> he came out of prison, made an album called Stupid Dude to Dumb. The song I recommend, I'm going to say it right now, is Life's a Bitch. Because it's life's a bitch and then you die. He talks about life, talks about prison. Is that the one that goes last? B- no, that's not. Nice. That's not. Nice. But I Matt Dre made a song. That's why you get high. And then you gotta go. But the Matt Dre one is super dark, super just fucking saying like, you know, uh, so we can give give stuff our kids, shit to our kids that they've never had, that we've never had. You know, so our kids can live fat better than we did when we was little niggas. That's what he said. So basically, uh, he started a whole fucking cultural revolution behind music and saying like, "All right, I made it out of prison. I have an urgency conspiracy to rob a bank with his other homies." Oh, it's the same thing with Bobby Schmurder. Really? Yeah, murder conspiracies. Oh fuck! I was looking into him because I got curious about it. 
I know I saw that post. I was like, hey, I don't know. I never heard of shit. But basically, for him to, to come out after five to six years of prison, see his career kind of like he, he had Stupid Duty Dumb album, right? It did good. He had the Rompilation, which did really good, which was a compilation of Bay Area artists. And that's where he said he made six figures. He made six figure income off the Rompilation. And he was business oriented. And he had a fucking daughter at 19. And he was saying, like, I gotta set this up. I gotta do all this shit. I gotta make these moves because my daughter, I gotta set it up for her. Just like Nas said, his daughter, if he dies, she gets royalties of his music. She gets a percentage. So she's set for life. Not any of his sons, his daughter. Does he have sons? I don't know. He was talking about his daughter specifically, but Matt Dre basically was like, all right, and I saw, like, he, he was doing really good after prison, and then he kind of, like, some of the stuff he was putting out wasn't hitting, and then he got into psychedelics. Shrooms, uh, ecstasy, which they labeled this, this mm -hmm. little okay. dance, okay. and then he completely went from gangster image, hardened, like, out of prison, to just kind of like free spirited mm -hmm. and just they were saying they're like Matt Dre just completely Shifted, got yeah. open minded about everything Asian people fucking white people everything was just like hey we're gonna have fun because I was in prison for six five six years I'm tired of rapping about this uh, gangster shit or this uh, this prison life well I just want to have fun so that's why he made those songs Thizzle Dance Feeling myself and when and get stupid when you hear him in the club, it has that certain energy to where it just makes you want to get the fuck up and dance. So by Matt Dre, the song I recommend is "Life's a Bitch," and that's the reason why is because he fucking uplifted everyone else that was down. He carried his team. He carried everyone else from the hood and started a. He was the leader. He led everything. Like, he was just like, hey, let's go. And he started fucking Diz Entertainment because Romp Records was being watched by the feds after a prison. And that's his name, was Romp Records. They called him the Romp Crew. That was his record company? That was his record company. Partial ownership? Or? It was, it, it was uh, what is it called? When you have uh, full rights yeah. to your music, creative control, <coughs> something like that. Co uh, Fuck, E-40 has it. Fold it? Fold it. It's called uh, something, but you keep a lot more money than if you were to sign like a major record deal. Sure. But you have to work your ass off. You have to have loyal fans that will buy your shit. Yeah. As opposed to people that won't buy it for their just download your shit. Okay. Next. Deftones. Hey, you fucking schmuck. Yeah, get out of here. Out of here. Get out of here. Out of here. Piss time? 